In this video, I'm going to show you continuous actions in Reaper. Now, what I'm talking about when I call it continuous actions, they're actions that we control that vary over time. In other words, if you just wanted to mute or unmute a track, that wouldn't be a continuous action. But if you want to adjust the volume of that track, that would be continuous. And we usually control that with a MIDI knob, MIDI fader, pitch bend, or mod wheel, or using our mouse wheel. And we could do that with modifiers or not. But the purpose of this video is to show you some continuous actions that you might not know about. So let's take a look. We'll go up here to the Actions menu, Show Action List, and we'll type in here in the filter, MIDI CC for continuous controllers. And right over here, there's a bunch of actions that'll control the sensitivity of other actions. So you can combine these with custom actions to change or adjust the sensitivity of the other actions. So if you wanna make zooming or scrolling 10% faster or slower, half speed, double speed, or even moving in a negative direction, we can combine this with those actions as a custom action to adjust the sensitivity of it. And as you can see, there's no keyboard shortcuts assigned to it by default. So let's take a look at a few others. Let's scroll down right here to adjust solo in front dim. Let's assign this to a mouse wheel. I'm gonna use some modifiers and my mouse wheel. Hit okay. And now if we go over here to options and we turn on solo in front, when we hit solo on a track, let's solo the kick, we could adjust the volume of our background tracks along with the kick. So right now, we just hear the kick. But we could slowly bring up the other tracks with that action, like this. And then back down to just hearing the kick. So we can adjust the background tracks with solo dimming with that action. Let's delete it. Let's check out a few others. Let's scroll down to automation. Right here, automation lane, set active fader. Let's assign it to our mouse wheel and some modifiers. Hit okay. And now if we create an envelope, let's make one for our drums, for volume, and we choose this envelope, we could use that action to adjust this envelope, like this. Make it louder or lower. And if we already created some points, they're all gonna move together, either down or up. We could deselect them all, and the whole envelope moves down and up. We'll just choose certain points and adjust those like this. We could also adjust our swing grid or the level of our metronome. Let's scroll down past these other actions to check out some more. We could adjust the tempo, whether it be coarse or fine. We're not gonna adjust mute or solo, but we could adjust the volumes for our tracks, whether it be last touched or just based on the selected tracks. Let's choose this one and assign it that mouse wheel and now we could select the track, adjust our mouse wheel, and it changes the volume for that track. And we could do multiple tracks if we want, like this, up or down, and just select the track, and that track is adjusted. And right down over here, we could see a bunch of them were already assigned, like scrubbing and jogging, adjusting the horizontal scroll or zooming, but you notice there's a few that are not. And we could use the reversed actions instead. If you prefer your continuous controllers to move in the opposite direction. One of the ones I wanna show you is this one right here, go to track. As you can see, it's not assigned by default, but it's very useful in big projects, finding and selecting our tracks. So let's assign it. And now, I could select this track, use that mouse wheel, 
and scroll through our project. Go to our vocal, zoom up to our snare or bass, and it's more useful in larger projects. So you can go down here to the double vocal or background vocals or back up to electric guitar and very quickly scroll through our entire project. And right below that action, we can move the edit cursor. Again, it's not assigned by default, but we could assign it to any keyboard shortcut you want, like a mouse wheel, a MIDI knob, a MIDI fader, pitch bend, or the mod wheel. And now, if our cursor is right here, we can move it with that continuous controller information or mouse wheel. Go forward or back and play it from there. And even move it during playback so it could start at a different place. So it's a great way of jumping around our timeline very quickly with a continuous controller. Like I said, we could use a mini knob, MIDI faders, pitch bend, mod wheel, or just use the mouse wheel with any modifiers you prefer. So that's pretty much it. That's continuous actions in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Oh!